Uh, today is a plasma application workshop, making microtransaction on the plasma chain. Um, and uh, please meet your mentor, Pong uh, Uh So you will learn the basic of plasma chain, how it works, and the use case from on a high level. Uh, I'm passing now to Pong. Pong, it's uh, all yours. Thank you, Elena. Um, and you, you nailed the last name there. Well done. Uh, <laughs> So, um, so hello everybody. Um, I think I can see everybody in the participants list. Um, uh, it's already 8.13, so I think I'll get started. Um, Elena, how much time do I have? You will have uh, one hour uh, for like if, about 40 minutes for the workshop and 20 minutes for questions, but this is a guideline. You can um, go on more if you, if you want. Um, also, everybody, uh, you are on mute, but you will be able to ask questions through chat. So there is the button uh, in the bottom of your screen. Uh, open your chat and send message to everyone. Okay, thank you. Okay, yeah, I think I see everybody in the chat. That's cool. Um, okay, so I think I will get started. So, uh, and, and uh, FYI, it's still... 8 a.m. Bangkok time. So if, if I'm, I'm rather somewhat slow, uh, that's that's the reason. But yeah, so today I'm going to be uh, exploring um, the application layer and the use case of the uh, OMG network. So uh, first of all, let me see if I can share my screen. Um, OK. So I think you should be able to see the uh, Google Slides. Uh, and now let me, huh. Okay, I can't present on Google Slides, but that's fine. I think I'll just go through the, um, the slide deck that I have. So for, uh, today, the, the, the topic is around making micropayments with the, uh, with, through the OMG network. So I'll just in, introduce myself first. So my name is Pong. I'm the product manager at uh, Omise Go. So I handle things that are more application facing. So as you know, the OMG network is quite low level. Um, so I help um, making facilitating and making informed decisions around APIs, integrations, um, external facing tools and libraries and, and applications and so on, um, with, with quite a focus on the adoption um, of the network um, where developers are uh, mostly concerned uh, because that's where, that's the background that I came in as well as a um, pretty much adapt developer. So um, that's uh, a little bit about me. So for the, the topic today, we'll go through some, we'll start off with like a high level use cases. So um, what are the things that you could do with the OMG network? Uh, what are the things that maybe more importantly, you cannot do? Uh, and we'll go not too deeply into the, uh, the more VP of plasma design. So, so uh, the FYI, the more VP design is the, Specific, uh, plasma specification that we're going with, uh, with the OMG network. And then the latter part, we'll explore some network architecture. So how does each component in the OMG network plans of fit in? Um, you know, what are the APIs? What are the gotchas? What are the things that you have, you as an application developer uh, have to know about? And then last but not least, we'll end with um, a little bit about integrations and what you could do as an integrator, as a dApp developer, to start plucking in and start making transactions. Um, the context of this uh, workshop, I guess, is more focused around, oh, uh, it was more centered around like the hackathon, so the EdCon hackathon. So if you guys are going to be attending the EdCon hackathon, um, this uh, should be somewhat valuable um, to you guys. Uh, if not, then that's okay. I think it's, uh, it's generalized enough that, um, in the future, uh, if you're planning to make an application or have use case for an application using uh, a plasma chain, then this should be a certain level, certain level of value to you guys. So, 
first explore some uh, kind of like you basic use cases and what I like to call non use cases. Um, so the focus of the OMG network, uh, some of you may not know is a real plasma chain, and we are enabling uh, micro payments. So if you have a an Ethereum tab that you would like to transfer um, funds over from like peer to peer, uh, peer to peer transactions, then of course, you have to pay the gas fee and the transaction costs, and that usually ends up being quite expensive. Um, what we enabled uh, using uh, the OMG network is that you can have micropayments, which means that you can make transactions with um, very little fees. Another use case for the OMG network that's being um, implemented is uh, with games. So if you, you're tokenizing your in-game assets, uh, for example, there's a game called Plasma Dog that's uh, implemented by Horde. Uh, so something like that, where you have a in-game asset that are that are basically tokenized, and you would like to transfer between uh, users. Um, at the moment, the, the I believe the token transfer only happens from game backends to uh, kind of like the, the end users on our client side. And, Another explore, uh, exploration that you can have is around uh, M2M. So not just peer-to-peer, -peer, you can have M2M, so machine-to-machine. -machine. Uh, I believe MVL chain is exploring something in, in, in this area um, or having an IoT types of payments where you can have uh, an actual device or an actual uh, internet of things as an agent. And these agents can actually start paying uh, each other. I think the pipe dream for like the M2M um, Market is, you know, maybe if you have a Tesla and you have an electric charging station and your Tesla has a wallet. So as your Tesla drives in and parks and charge, you know, you, you pay, your Tesla actually pay for the electricity, not you that's paying for it. So that's, that's quite fascinating as well. Author. That might be some way away. Okay. So the more prominent use cases that uh, we are exploring at uh, Obviously, say go is around points um, or loyalty points to be exact. So if you have a company and if you have your own brand, your own products, maybe you would like to have a higher engagement. What you would want to do is you would want to have a loyalty point for your brand. Um, in, in this current stage, most of the loyalty points are highly siloed. Um, it's, it's good if you're like a large, um, massive corporate uh, corporation and like really massive brand, you want people to just use your, your points. But for um, large, uh, maybe mid-sized players, then you would want to have, you know, some kind of like loyalty points for, for your business, local businesses. And you want uh, to an extent to make it uh, interoperable with other types of points, right? And, and this is where uh, blockchain comes in, in the sense that it's going to be much easier for brands for companies for businesses to be able to exchange points with one another if they are basically on the same settlement layer right if they're sitting on the same payment rail um, so so that's where uh interoperable uh, loyalty points comes in and, and, that, and that's quite fascinating the next exploration that we are also exploring uh at omiseco is around exchanges so exchange of values um, quite similar to um, Dex designs or exchanges that you're normally using to maybe trade you for um, Ethereum for OMG tokens or OMG tokens for SNTs and so on. Um, we're not going to go too deep about exchanges, uh, but we are exploring at OMC Go a, a way to have a um, kind of like a hybrid between custodial and non custodial designs that you can start uh, exchanging your points or your tokens for different types of ERC-20 tokens. Oh, so FYI, all the tokens that are sitting in the OMG network are all ERC-20 tokens, but we will um, we will we'll dig deeper into that. And last but not least, kind of like my favorite is proof of existence. Um, so if you, uh, if there's people that came in from the Bitcoin world, uh, actually I find this quite fascinating is because you can have, like proof of existence is kind of like the first uh, non-financial use cases of the blockchain. And you can do something similar with the OMG network uh, soon, where you could say, oh, I have this land title, or I have this like digital art, um, so on. And then you basically hash it and you store it uh, as a metadata on the meta, uh, on a data field on the blockchain. 
on in your transactions. So you say, oh, okay, I have this piece of data, I've signed it and I've uh, stored it. And you can verify that it's me or it's this signature that signed it. And you can verify it because it's part of the blockchain that this thing or this transaction happens. So, so um, proof of existence is quite interesting. Now to go to like the non-use cases, um, so the more VP um, plasma specification is a UTXO based uh, blockchain. So uh, quite similar to, to Bitcoin and other UTXO based like um, cryptocurrency or, or distributed ledger. Uh, we don't exactly have the, we don't have like the same state transition that you would have in Ethereum uh, in, or in EOS. So the smart contracts is kind of out of the picture here. Um, there, there is no, I think we, we're not, this means that in the future that could be something quite basic as like script, something similar to Bitcoin scripting or multi-stick wallet, but in its current iteration, um, you, the, you don't expect to have any type of smart contracts or any sort of like logic that is sitting on the blockchain. Um, and, it, and by the way, if you guys have any questions, uh, you can feel free to, to ask them here uh, and we'll, we'll answer towards the end. Or if it's more relevant to the topic of discussion, then I, I'd be happy to answer um, here as well. So, okay. So that's the use case and the non-use cases. And I think if you are familiar with the um, kind of like the Plasma Chain ecosystem, um, then you know that, oh, like, you know, there's a lot of different variations and different implementations of Plasma Chain. Um, and, and this it gets quite uh, hectic because uh, I, don't, I don't think there's best practice around naming convention in, in Plasma. Um, and you have people that come up with different uh, flavor, I would say, of Plasma all the time. So this, this diagram was taken in, I believe around late October or November 2018. So uh, quite obviously there's a lot more to be added to this diagram now. But, but as you can see, it's, there's a lot, like there's a huge variety um, that's based upon, you know, whether a certain type of Plasma specification uh, is UTXO based, whether it is account based, whether um, it enables smart contract, whether it use CK snark and so, and so on. Um, so I, I think for, in the context, I'm not gonna go through um, too many of them, but in the context of what you can do with the OMG network and, and our plasma design, it is uh, a more VP plasma design. Um, so it's a variation of uh, plasma MVP that's authored by Vitalik. So we are right here in the left hand corner. So by asked if uh, you could download this PowerPoint, um, yes. I think, uh, Elena, can I put up like, uh, I think at the end of the presentation, I can put up a, maybe a URL so for people to, to download. Yes, please put it in the chat. Okay, cool. Um, let's see. Mm. One moment. Okay, and I think I think in the end, um, I'll, I'll send the link um, to, to to the slide deck as well, um, so that anybody that, that visits this video later could could find it. Um, but yeah, uh, so that's kind of like the the plasma different plasma variations. So look, we'll dive into the more VP design. Um, right now. So um, that's kind of like three main places that I would go if I would like to explore um, whether that is uh, a specific implementation of Plasma or a specific implementation of uh, the, the more uh, Plasma more VP design. Um, 
So for the, um, I think I think we'll go first with we'll look at the ETH research first because um, if you're not familiar with ETH research, it's where a lot of like the designs and discussions happen around different plasma implementation. So this is a post made by my old colleague uh, Kevin Fitcher and and Ben Jones, and it's focused around like uh, the plasma more VP specification and, and um, how it works and so on. Um, I think it might be more, it might be better to, to explain the um, kind of like what Plasma MVP is. So, um, and if, if you guys are curious, you can find the links here and uh, I'm not, I'm just reiterating a lot of the stuff that's content that's outlined. Um, and, and basically the Plasma MVP is the first implementation of Plasma and it focused on UTXOs. So if you have a, if you're not familiar with UTXOs, I, I recommend you check out and it's uh, consistent across uh, a blockchain like Bitcoin. So if you have a ETH or ERC20 tokens and so on, it's denoted as a, a blob or an object of UTXOs. And for one UTXO, let's say you want to make, uh, if you have like 100 token, you want to send 50 token to another user. What you do is you split that UTXO uh, inside the shell chain uh, from one UTXO to two UTXOs. And you uh, send one to yourself, which is like the change that you want to send yourself. And you send the other value, which is the value you're trying to send to the, uh, the destination address. And um, that's a transaction part of the, uh, of the plasma chain. Now there's, there's basically three kind of major functions that you can do on a plasma machine, uh, deposit, uh, transact, and exit. So with the deposit, you know, if you, most plasma machines use a Ethereum or Ethereum based networks as its root chain. So in this root chain, you can, um, let's say you have some ERC20 tokens. So let's say SMT, you can deposit. So you send the SMT tokens to that uh, specific plasma machine. And after a certain amount of time, that class machine sees, uh, registers new events and says, oh, okay, there is a new uh, token being deposited. So then after um, however many blocks, let's say seven blocks, you can see the transactions, uh, you can see the new UTXO emerges on the, on the blockchain. Now, we're not going to go over, uh, that's another part, which is quite equally as important, which is the exit and withdrawal process. Uh, we're not gonna go too deep into that, um, but basically the, the kind of like the features that makes a plasma chain uh, more desirable uh, to be used in, um, in, in application level, as opposed to um, a proof of authority, a pure side chain, a, a pure proof of authority side chain is that um, there's certain higher guarantee that your funds will not Lost. So if I'm a single operator and I am running a POA based sidechain um, and you decided to, you want to bridge your tokens over to the sidechain, then I as, a, as the operator can actually take your fund, right? I could basically just lock it and then you would not be able to exit your funds back to the root chain where you have this, this um, network security. In the, uh, in the context of Plasma Chain and any kind of like very uh, variations of plasma chain, you have the strong guarantee that there are um, there are somewhat complex exits and withdrawal process, and a lot of the the kind of the research and the game theory happens there, which is how do we make sure that uh, anybody and everybody can exit their funds safely uh, without being without the chances of being compromised by the uh, the op operator of a side chain if they you know choose to be malicious in the end um so so with the uh more more vp specification it's, it's based on mvp and the exit process is kind of similar but with one less uh extra step and and we'll go through that too um, so over here is the uh the more vp documentation so it's right here. So the, it's basically uh, an extension of minimum viable plasma, which I've already described. Um, 
the if you're familiar with that, then, then that's great. The only part that is that I would say is the differentiator between the two is around the exit protocols, um, and it's and it's around uh, confirmation signature. So with the MVP specification, every single time a user has to or well, would like to send transaction to someone, um, a user would have to sign the transaction twice. So it was sign transaction once to send it, and once the transaction is sent, they need to confirm that it's been added. So it, like another uh, confirmation signatures. Um, so this is obviously a poor user experience, right? Um, and, and blockchain is already as hard as it is. So the more VP specification that is being implemented by us allows a user to just sign transactions once so that we get rid of confirmation signature that you would find in MVP. And there is um, another kind of like key criterion uh, in, in more VP scenario is that you can have an in-flight transaction uh, or, or in-flight exit. So as you spend a certain transaction, or if you spend a certain UTXO, um, from a perspective of that user, uh, maybe they don't have access to, to the block, right? Maybe a user is uh, using like a really dumb client on a browser somewhere. So they can, what they can do is they can um, basically, it allows them to still be able to exit that fund um, only after um, sending the transaction and without seeing the block. Um, and that, that's basically in-flight transactions uh, in the nutshell. Uh, we won't go over to, to the, I think the game theory um, of the in-flight transactions and, and exit games. Uh, I think that's somewhat beyond the scope of maybe the current discussions. But yeah, if you want to know more about the Morphe P design, uh, we have uh, a documentation in our Elixir-OMG repo as well. And you can give it a read. And it's pretty um, comprehensive. Um, uh, it goes over different uh, transactions, how to make transactions, different exit games, um, different um, game theoretic uh, scenarios. Okay, I think that's sufficient amount of like, in, info on the on the more VP side. And if you have more questions, though, I can add. You can add them into into the chat as well. Um, and I think Vai said that uh, he cannot see the picture too clearly. Um, Elena, can you see the screen fine? Um, yes, I can. Okay, I think I'll zoom in maybe a slightly bit. So, um, hmm. kind of can't do this. Okay, it's a little bit better. Okay, so for the um, for the next part. Um, we'll explore some network architecture. So how the uh, OMG network kind of works from, from a high level. Um, and again, this is documentation is part of the uh, Elixir-OMG repo, which is where our production um, OMG network kind of uh, live. So this diagram uh, kind of explains how this diagram kind of explains how the different components and different uh, sub application works together. So if you go to the repo, you see that uh, we have three key um, uh, components to this. Uh, one which is the shell chain, and you know, I think I think from further on, the the plasma chain in itself would be uh, would be considered a shell chain, and the root chain in this case Ethereum would be referred to as a root chain. And you know, the part of the reason is that um, a plasma is a design spec, and it does not limit any uses of uh, of this design on any particular type of blockchain. So the shell chain can be um, different implementation. You can have the um, different root chain that you would like to to have a, a plasma um, that you would like to enable plasma to to have a higher scalability. So. Uh, so we'll, we'll pretend we'll look at this in the context of uh, Ethereum for now. So let's say a user comes in, right, and a user decides to, oh, I would like to use a plasma chain. So what they would do is they would come in here, and there are kind of three, I would say, interfaces that they could have. Whether they're they're, they're um, interfacing through an exchange, or they could be interfacing through uh, an e-wallet, and the e-wallet is um, basically a uh, 
white label wallet solutions for enterprises uh, to allow them to quickly uh, tokenizing uh, their existing or their, their um, kind of like point systems or their, or their digital assets. Um, so they can uh, interact with Plasma through the e-wallet as well. And I think more so with the, the concern of the context of Hackathon, uh, this, in this case, it will be a, a direct user. So a direct user comes in, uh, he or she would like to uh, transact on the, um, directly to the OMG network. And if they have access to a, the, the watcher, so in this case, the watcher is uh, a, val a validating node, or, or a, I think of it as a, basically a full node. Right? Uh, it's, it's called a watcher, but it, it acts sort of like an Ethereum full node. So they could have access to the full node. Um, they have, let's say they have a, a wallet already. They can interact with the watcher. And every single interaction that they used to do, they only have to interact with the watcher, except if it's interaction with the, uh, with the root chain contract. So a user comes in, let's say he has like a, uh, like 100 ESC20 tokens, uh, and, and this user is, a, a classic example is Alice, and Alice wants to transfer, let's say 20 tokens to Bob. Alice would then call the deposit function, and the deposit function is right here. Um, as part of the root, root chain smart contract, the Plasma smart contract. And once she clicks on deposit and the funds are deposited into this contract, up a certain amount of blocks, the watcher would see that, oh, okay, the transaction is being included. So now there, the transaction is included into this, um, into this child chain. So, and the, and the child chain as, Let's say, let's say that's a direct user C that uh, her transaction is included. She can then make a, a transaction to Bob. So she would call a function to submit transaction. And then that transaction would be transferred um, to Bob on, on the shell chain. And the moment that that particular transaction is included, the shell chain server would then submit block. So this is kind of like a, a quite an expensive operation. So that, um, but, but essentially, each uh, interval uh, for each single uh, uh, batch of transactions that happen on the shell chain, it gets submitted. Uh, the block, uh, the Merkle root of that block is submitted onto the root chain smart contract. Um, and, and that, and once after a certain amount of time, and you have that finality and you have that block included on, on the shell chain, uh, on the root chain, sorry. And then after a while, let's say, um, Bob and Alice make subsequent trans uh, transactions uh, back and forth, and Bob says, "Look, I, you know, um, for some reason, I would like to exit my funds back into Ethereum. Maybe um, Bob doesn't want to uh, keep transacting anymore, so he decided he, he wants to exit his fund. So what he could do is he could call the exit function. So the moment that Bob calls the exit function." Uh, he would go through a certain interval of challenge period, and, and this can be arbitrary, and this, can, this is configurable. So after this challenge period and um, has ended, and let's say there's no invalid transactions, and let's say oh, the, all, the, all the implementation of the watchers watches this specific function and say, oh, okay, Bob can actually, he should feel free to exit his fund back to the root chain. And then after that, for now, that period, then, um, Bob can call process exit and have his fund um, be be sent back to himself um, on the Ethereum on the Ethereum mainnet. There, there's some more documentation around how each components work, and if you would like to get into uh, the technical uh, nitty gritty, then feel free to to take a look at this doc as well. So I hope I'm not going too fast, um, and and then the next part is. Um, it's more relevant, I think, if you are looking to implement or develop an application. And I'm also, I'm also quite curious on, on, on the, um, if you guys are watching this, on why you're interested in implementing um, a decentralized application or, or what is your particular use case or what is, what is it that you're trying to achieve using the, the OMG network. And so feel free to, to add some ideas that whatever you guys want to hack on or whatever you guys want to end up building. And I'll be happy to, to give you guys feedback um, during the hackathon and, and then before that as well. Um, so
So where the hackathon and where the application level things are concerned, um, we have uh, client libraries. So the interaction with the Plasma Chain and the interaction with the uh, smart contract is somewhat low level. Um, to facilitate that, we have a JavaScript client library. Um, and that's uh, in the repo called omg.js. Uh, uh, and this is uh, developed by Kevin Sullivan and, and I. So um, it basically is a wrapper around uh, a lot of the functions in, in the more VP implementation so that you could make easily make a deposit, you can easily transact, and you can easily exit from the child chain um, onto the root chain. And because it's JavaScript, um, you could run this on Node, which is the server side. So if you would like to run uh, a server side application in Node.js, you could do that with this library. Or if you're more uh, user facing, and if you want to build a client, uh, a wallet for a user, you could also um, require the, uh, uh, just import the file um, right with the script tag. So, you, so if you're build, building a um, a client side wallet, then you could just bring this file and then a user would be able to make all these transactions uh, on the client side as well. Um, and we have a few implementation. Um, we have uh, kind of like an example of how you would deposit on how you would transact, kind of like a boilerplate code. Um, so, you know, this is like a, a simple process of how you would deposit. Let's say you have a plasma smart contract and you have access to a root chain. Um, with, you can set a few parameters and you can start depositing um, your, your ETH or your ESC20 tokens on the root chain. And then you can also start transacting that um, on the shell chain once that is included. So if you are from a JavaScript background, I recommend you check it out. Um, I think the only client library that we have right now is the, um, the JavaScript, but we could expect a little bit more in the future. And uh, we are open to having uh, some client library and integration library implementation be implemented by the community as well. So, um, so that, that's, I think, more to come in the future. So if you are part of the hackathon, that is, uh, OnGJS is quite stable and it's quite ready to use. Um, and to make life maybe somewhat easier, uh, we've made a what we call a JS starter kit. And this is more of like if you want to hack around or if you want to get something up and running quite quickly, um, this is a, a pure boilerplate uh, implementation of an OMG wallet on the client side. And my, when I say on the client, I mean on the browser. So that, you know, by and, and, and this, the beauty of this is that it's in pure HTML and in pure uh, vanilla JavaScript. So there's no framework, there's no dependency, there's nothing for you to install. Uh, if you just clone this, and if you have an instance of a, um, the OMG network uh, Plasma, a more VP Plasma running, you could just take this, you could just clone it and then just run it on your browser. And if you have some E, um, you can just start interacting with, with the, with the um, with the client side code. So no dependency whatsoever. Um, and I'll, we'll dig a little bit deeper into how uh, everything kind of works. So in this um, kind of like omg-wallet.js file is where you, you have everything you need. So let's say you have, um, let's say you have an instance running on maybe a ring beat, then you basically put a, a web three provider with that's your local get node or that is on uh, one that is on Infura. Um, you can specify like, okay, this is where the watcher endpoint is. This is where the shell chain endpoint is. And this is where my smart contract, uh, the plus machine smart contract is. And the client side wallet should be able to uh, quite essentially just um, query the, the UTXO for you uh, immediately. And um, it has functions to create a key store. So without having to have dependency on MetaMask, the, the client-side wallet will create um, a public-private key for you based on your seed phrase. So if you just put a seed phrase, um, it will generate for you a, a wallet. You can restore. You can restore your wallet from your seed phrase. 
and you can have a, a new address ba based on that seed phrase. Um, it can also show your uh, shell chain balances, so how much ETH or how much to in tokens you have in, in UTXOs on the, on the root chain, and you can see how much balance you have on the shell chain. Um, and yeah, and there's a right wrapper function around deposits. So if you just put in uh, a value for a deposit, then it would just um, depositing the, the funds from the root chain onto that child chain for you. And it's, it's quite intuitive. And the same thing for child, uh, the child chain transfer. So once the fund is in the child chain, you can start transacting. And, and this function will generate everything that you need for you. Um, it's I, would, I wouldn't say it's quite ready for production usage. Um, there's a lot of more things, maybe security-wise, you have to consider. But in the as far as the a hackathon, or if you want to try something out, or if you want to try calling um, API on the network, um, this is uh, I, I highly recommend doing it through something like this because uh, your life would be much easier without having to stop, install any type of dependency, without having to um, install any Chrome plugins without having to install any apps, and anybody could could start transacting. Okay. So that uh, is a JS starter kit. It's already open source, I believe, and you could. Um, I think I think right now, if you would like to run it, you could, and, but you would need like an instance of the uh, uh, the OMG network and the shell chain. Um, for I think for now, you would probably have to. Install a local instance. If you go to Elixir, um, Elixir OMG, we have a Docker Compose file. So if you're familiar with Docker, you can or Docker Compose, you can get up uh, up and running pretty fast by just um, running Docker Compose up, and then you can have an, a local instance of the uh, OMG network. Now, if you are part of the hackathon and you would like to build something that is like an OMG um, application or a Plasma application, you don't have to be reliant on installing or having a local instance of, of that child chain. Um, just for this hackathon, we'll spin up a, an instance for you so that um, each participant can just integrate to the same instance and be on the same network. Um, and, and Basically, you can put more time and focus around building application without having to worry about um, running this child chain or having having this child chain operating. So yeah, and um, last but not least, uh, we have a we have the what we call the ODP. So the ODP is uh, Omiseko Developer Program um, in an effort to incrementally like release uh, our new products. Um, and, and for for now, what may concern um, a alpha release. So we are we're currently running an alpha release of our network um, that, that is limited to people as that is part of the ODP program and people that is um, part of our partners. So if you would like to integrate, um, you could basically join and you could uh, submit it um, a, a little bit about yourself and what you would like to do and your tech stack, and um, you'd be uh, legible for uh, being part of the program, and you would get early access um, to uh, documentation. You can get early access to boilerplate code um, and any types of products and toolings that will end up making in the future as well. Um, so, so as part of this program, you get to interact with our engineers um, and and myself included. So, I think this question in the chat um, is the OMG network the Plasma shell chain and Ethereum root chain. Um, so if we look at the, let me see if I can, oh, by the way, I think I, that's, that's kind of like the end of the presentation. So if you have like questions, like feel free to ask right now and I'll, I'll be quite happy to answer. Um, so, so for this particular question, let me see if I can show you the network diagram again. I think for, for what the user is concerned and what the developer is concerned, um, the OMG network comprises of the shell chain and um, the watcher and the root chain smart contract. So um, not maybe not the entire Ethereum, but I think the, 
the kind of the encapsulation around what you would call an OMG network would, would consist of just that smart contract on the root chain. And, and there's two other external components. So not all of the root chain is, is part of the, the Ethereum network, uh, the OMG network, sorry. Yeah, if you have any more questions um, and or maybe not even have to be questions, maybe if you have like an implementation or an application that you have in mind that you would like to start hacking together in, in Edcon or if you have an application that you, you're interested in making on what you're making right now and if you're wondering if that design is compatible with the OMG network, I, I would be, um, I, I'd be quite happy to, to give you guys feedback. Uh, questions from the Chinese community. What are the differences from Omisego Plasma and other plasmas? Um, so now that's I, I think I think as you may know, that's quite a lot of plasma implementation. So this it's probably it, it's probably larger than this diagram. And and uh, the Omisego's version of flavor of plasma is right here. Uh, it's called more viable plasma. So um, there are many plasma uh, specification out there. Uh, I think Loom Network is doing a really good job with uh, Plasma Cache, and there's a lot of. Uh, I think Plasma Group is doing a really good job with uh, as well with. The, I think their implementation is is Plasma Cache, uh, with that. and then eventually they'll go into building. Um, I forgot. I forgot the name of, but. But yeah, I think for for what you're concerned with, um, the the key differentiators between varieties of plasma is in, um, I think I think kind of like two or three things. Uh, whether they are UTXO based, so so if they're 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 either UTXO based or they're account based, and the second factor is whether they are uh, supporting um, a fungible or non fungible token. So for uh, more VP plasma. Uh, I think it's written in the white paper as well that we would like to have an exchange or decentralized exchange built on top of that plasma. For that, for that uh, exchange implementation and for that um, value transfer uh, kind of implementation, you kind of need to have a, a UTXO where you are able to easily split between a large UTXO and a small chunk of UTXO. Or if you are able to split a merged uh, you, a bunch of UTSOs together. So you want to have this flexibility of how you would like to transfer your fund. In the perspective of uh, Plasma Cash, I think right now the focus has been uh, quite a lot on ESC721 tokens, which are considered non-fungible. So if you have a single value or single unit and you're not looking to partially spend or partially split it and merge it, um, then I think Plasma Cash is, is a viable solution for that use case. If you have an exchange or if you're building a peer-to-peer -peer payment or simple tran transactions, then I think in this case, uh, the more VP would be, would be quite a better fit. Uh, so next question, uh, what are the differences from, oh, okay, are you, are you part of the Lightning team as well? What are your process of the Plasma research now? Um, I don't, I, as I recall, I don't think we're part of the, of the Lightning team. Um, and, and I'm not sure what you, what you mean by, by Lightning, uh, if you're referring to um, a Bitcoin Lightning network, then I, I guess the answer is no. Um, however, I think one of the, uh, our advisor and the person that wrote the, the Plasma white paper, Joseph Poon, is pretty, um, kind of ingrained and, and, and involved in, in the Lightning team. So that might be why you're, you think you're part of the Lightning team. Um, so in the context, uh, in, in the question of whether, what is the like process for the plasma research, um, I'd say we, we kind of move on quite a significant, uh, we, we make quite significant progress on plasma research now. Uh, to the point that right now we are more focused on implementation. So if you look at a kind of like a deep tech scenario of like a of like a life cycle of software development, 
um, if you have something that's like highly unknown, then you you want to start with a, a research process, and then once um, after a certain cycles that is done, then you focus on the implementation. And I think for Omicycle, we are focusing on on the latter. So we're implementing, um, we're taking the design and the research that's being done by by Kevin Fitcher and by uh, David Nat, and we're actually focusing on productionizing. Um, and implementing that. So, so we answer, instead of answer, answering questions around whether this could work, whether this is um, game theoretically like secured, uh, whether a design for this is sound. Um, right now, we're, we're canceled, kind of answered all that with our more viable plasma. And right now, the questions that we're trying to answer is that are there uh, blocks to be resolved? Are there issues uh, on the networking layer? How's the latency um, going? Uh, what kind of like Throughput, we can we squeeze out of the application by optimizing um, a few factors. Uh, so, so that's kind of like the, the things that we're tackling right now, and and these things are post research process. So, so we're, we're to answer your question shortly is that um, the plasma research for for us um, for now is is basically being done, um, and, and that doesn't mean that it's excluded or any type of further research in the future. Um, I briefly mentioned that we do not support smart contract. We do not support any type of scripting or multi-sig wallet as of yet. So if there are any other research, it might be happening on, on that front instead. So, so that might, that could be more in the future, but for the next few months, I, I don't think that would be that, that, that part is quite done. Will there be any, uh, next question is, will there be any hackathon for OMG in the near future? Um, I think we'll, we'll have one for sure. At, um, it's not OMG specific, but uh, we're gonna be part of EdCon. So, um, and so expect to see us in, in April, um, around the 7th, 8th to the 10th. Um, and I think there, there might be more that we're planning in the works as well this year. So I, I would say I do expect like a couple more perhaps, uh, but, but nothing's too set in stone yet. Um, if, if you would like to um, be more aware of what's going on and whether we'll have any hackathon in the future, I think uh, when we have that solidified, we'll put that on, on Twitter or we'll put that on, um, on our newsletter. So, so stay tuned for that. Um, the next question is, if I'm a small business, how could we use the Omiseco product? Uh, that's a good question. If you are a small business and you are not looking, it depends. It kind of depends on your definition of SME. If you look at an SME as a um, not too technically literate users, uh, someone who would like to send transactions around, um, there would be. They would not need to know that they're working, they, that they're using any Omniseco products. Um, and because the OMG network and the things that we're building is quite lower on the, on the, on the tech stack uh, and the user is right here. So there's like gaps in between for people to make middleware, so people, people to make uh, application layer. Um, and, and as far as a small business may concern, um, they don't even need to know what are what is being implemented as their payment rail, right? The same, the same way that small businesses, when they uh, do remittances, they don't have to understand how, the, how their banks are wiring their money or, or what kind of like protocols or messaging protocols that, that these interbank communication will kind of need, right? Um, for, for their concern, they're using an app and they're sending of value around and they, they can see that they get email confirmation and, and things that are revolved around the application layer. But but their interaction with the OMG network is, is quite minimal. And let's say if they are, are a, a certain brand, maybe they're an e-commerce business, um, they could be use, using the e-wallet. So with the OMG e-wallet, we are somewhat more enterprise, more consumer facing. Um, so if they are that brand, maybe they're uh, using our true suite. Maybe they are using uh, an implementation of a white label uh, e-wallet design or you know, white label e-wallet um, code base. Um, and yeah, I, I think that's uh, I think that that's that's 
probably answer your questions. Uh, what's a TPS now? Um, good question. And I think we, we get asked um, that um, quite a lot as well. Um, um, I think TPS is, is, I consider TPS kind of uh, a halfway between uh, vanity metrics and, and, uh, and actual meaningful metrics. And the reason I say that is because people claim that they make a certain throughput, a certain amount of transactions per second, um, while without disclosing how they come up with that number. Um, and if, you, if you're looking to test how much throughput or how many transactions per second you, you get out of uh, a certain implementation, um, that kind of numbers could be misleading depending on, on what you're testing or what uh, specifically you're benchmarking. Um, I think internally we are looking at uh, um, trying to implement a more realistic uh, benchmarking that, that, that we could do uh, when the network is out there. Um, but and as far as that is concerned, um, I believe we are ranging in the, um, in the thousands um, for our uh, proof of authority uh, implementation of the blockchain, uh, not going to proof of stake. Um, and that, that should be in the thousands. I'm kind of hesitant to give the number on the, the upper bound of that, but I think it's safe to assume that um, uh, for a use case that requires maybe uh, a thousand TPS or, or more, um, um, it's quite safe to, to use OMG, uh, OMG network. Um, when and how could small business connect with Omiseco using the e-wallet? Uh, that's a really good question. I think for the e-wallet team, um, the the sprint cycle for for this quarter is is emphasized on the Ethereum integration. So for those that are not familiar with the e-wallet, um, it allows you to create uh, tokenized points, uh, whether that is on uh, a centralized uh, database, basically like a, a ledger on, on a, like PostgreSQL. And um, you're also able to do that and then um, mint these points on Ethereum on, on the root chain. And you're also able to mint and transfer these points on the plasma chain. So I kind of see the e-wallet as a three layer solution. However, um, with the focus being uh, more customer facing, uh, being enterprise facing. So we have like an admin panel, so you can easily make transactions on this particular ledger, on, on centralized ledger, on the root chain, which is Ethereum, and on the child chain, which is the, um, the OMG network. So the current progress of the e-wallet is that we are, I think we're right now on the um, Ethereum phase. So we're looking at in, uh, our integration with Ethereum and what that could look like. Um, so, I would expect within a few months that there would be, if you're working predominantly in, in Ethereum, uh, that could be things that you can start connecting with. Um, if you're a small business and um, your requirements are such that you require really high throughput and a lot of like micro uh, microtransactions and so on, um, I would probably suggest you wait until we have a um, Plasma integration that you could, that you could integrate to. So I, I hope that um, answered your question. And I think the e-wallet um, Kanban board is public as well. So if you Google um, Waffle Board, um, OMG, or Omiseko e-wallet, you should be able to see what are the things that are in progress and what are the things that, uh, what are the feature sets that are in the backlogs that, that it will be tackled next. Um, uh, next question. Can you explain the product in the real use case? When will the product release and the, and the product release plans? Um, uh, the first question is interesting. Uh, I would, the, the latter sounds like uh, when, when release or when public or when in that. Um, I'll, I'll try to answer the second question first, uh, which is uh, around the product release. And with the current release, we are in, um, uh, I think we sent a newsletter last week about uh, Ari, which is our alpha release. Um, so that's limited to uh, people in the audio key program, Omiseko developer program, and internally uh, within Omiseko and with the existing partners. Um, so 
uh, in that uh, specific scenario, we're looking at we're looking at um, getting rid of all the bugs, um, solving networking issues, making sure people integrate, making sure that there is uh, a certain quality of usability for the developers that, so that they don't struggle, um, making sure that the, the you know there's a high amount a high level of uptime and that making sure that we could uh, scale the applications to a uh, certain amount of users. Uh, so that's kind of like what is in the works. And the next step that follows that, um, it would be a, a more a beta release where uh, it's kind of like open to people to, to join in. Um, and and that, that's what in the works. And, and that's our release plans. Um, uh, when mainnet, I can't answer that. <laughs> So can you explain the product in, in real use case? So a, a real use case would be um, something that I, I mentioned earlier in the beginning. So kind of use cases around games, uh, micropayments, a scenario where you need like a really high throughput uh, transactions, uh, exchanges. Um, uh, but that, that could be more in the future. But these are the, like, the things that we don't narrow down to uh, when as far as the business um, small business, a small enterprise use case. Uh, I could see that they would be interested in, in the, the e-wallet engine and using the e-wallet engine to mint uh, loyalty points or coupons and, and so on. Um, it, it's kind of like asking what are the uses, use cases of like double book accounting, right? Um, well, you can keep things in a ledger, but what are the use cases of, of like ledger? It's, it's quite limitless. It's depending on like what you would like to to keep an accounting of, of if you, what we would like to, to transact. Um, it, it, there's a wide variety that you could go over without needing um, complex smart contracts. Uh, just join the ODP program. Hope you can try the offer release as well. Thank you. Yeah, hope uh, to help you get your hands on the, uh, the integration and the integration libraries and, and I'd like to hear more from your perspective as a developer uh, what could be improved or uh, what is your uh, roadblock and then and ideally make that integration uh, story a little bit easier. Um, and I think the, the ongoing trend with uh, blockchain development is that it's quite hard or it's quite uh, a number of steps that you have to dig into uh, through if you are a developer. Um, so a, the, a lot of the ODP program for the developers would be to kind of like being able to navigate what are the things that you know that could be improved, what are the things that um, we could do to have like uh, a life of a developer slightly easier or, or helping um, somebody make an application or helping someone building meaningful uh, uses or getting meaningful uses out of the OMG network. Um, so yeah. I think that's all. Uh, okay, uh, I'd be happy to take uh, one last question. Um, would the product support non ESC twenty tokens as well? Um, good question. Uh, in its current form, we're not supporting. Uh, we're definitely not supporting uh, non fungible tokens, so we're not supporting ERC seven twenty one. I think if you were to um, fork the code base and and implement a feature that um, enable different types of ERC, ERC tokens. It could be viable, but then um, there might be some serious like auditing, some serious uh, testing works to do. Uh, with that said, if you have a ERC20, uh, a derivative of an ERC20 types of contracts, um, I, think, I think one example is like uh, ERC223 um, that is backward compatible with ERC20 tokens. It could be, it would be viable. Uh, it, it could, I, I think the smart contract would support those kind of tokens, give, given that, you know, it's, it's backward compatible and it shared the same interface with those tokens. Um, but I would, I wouldn't be too quick to come up to that conclusion. Um, uh, maybe explore that a little bit more, um, making sure that there, there's no bugs or no issues. Um, so, yeah. I think uh, I think that's it, Elena. Okay, thank you, Pong. Uh, thank you very much. Um, so Pong is the product manager uh, of Amisigo, and he was talking about uh, making microtransactions on the Plasma chain. Um, our next workshop 
Uh, let me share my screen. Next workshop will be from Luke Anderson, co-founder of Sigma Prime, uh, uh, of about anatomy of a client. Uh, just remind you that uh, you can sign up uh, for the EdCon Hackathon at edcon.io slash hackathon. And here you see um, all the social media and everything. Um, please follow us. And this workshop uh, was brought to you by LinkTime and CryptoChicks. And hope to see you all uh, at EdCon on April 8th in Sydney. And thank you very much, Wong, again.